Good evening, Year 10. Welcome to Friday Night Mathematics. Um, what we are going to be covering in this lesson is a review of, ge of geometry. There's quite a lot of content to get through, so I'm going to rip through a lot of this fairly quickly. It's pretty well all revision, uh, which might have been given away by the term geometry review at the start of it. First, first thing first, uh, angles at a point. Complementary angles. Complementary angles add to... 90 degrees, right? So complementary angles sum to 90 degrees. Supplementary angles, what do they add to? They add to 180 degrees. Revolutionary angles. What's a revolution? Full circle, right? They sum to 360 degrees. Vertically opposite angles. That's where you've got a situ situation like this and the lines are opposite each other. How are those angles related? They are the same. So vertically opposite angles are the same. All right, and I'm just gonna go through a example of each. So since I'm down here already, if this here happened to be 51 degrees, what would X be? X indeed would also be 51 degrees. Fair enough. Examples of this one. So if you had a right angle like situation, so both of these sides are going to be right angles, and I had a line here and this is 35 degrees, what would Y be equal to? You should be able to say, well, they're complementary angles, these two. These two, they have to add to be 90 because they're complementary. 35 plus y has to equal 90. Subtract your 35 from both sides, you should be able to tell me that y is 55 degrees. There's my subtract 35 from both sides. You don't have to write what I put in red, it's just showing you my working. Supplementary angles, that one above could have also been interpreted as a supplementary angle because all of those there have to add to be 180, don't they? They're a straight line, there's 180 degrees in there. So supplementary, I could have also used the, the argument of supplementary angles there. In that case, it would have been, well, 90 plus 35 plus y has to equal 180. 90 plus 35 you can combine, that's 125. Then to get y by itself, we subtract 125 from both sides. All right. That gives us y is 55 degrees as well. Cool. So yes, all of them together are supplementary. They add to 180. Revolutionary. So we'll do another diagram, this time might do one like that. And let's say that's 120 degrees. And we want to know what this is. What should I call this one, Z? All right, you should realize that combined, these add up to 360 degrees. They make a revolution. So 120 plus Z is 360. To get Z by itself, we subtract 120. So subtract 120 from both sides. You should be able to tell me that Z is 240 degrees. Alright, so that's the very first part of our content, which is angles at a point. Complementary angles add to 90, supplementary to 180, revolutionary to 360, and vertically opposite angles are equal. I'm going to pause for a sec and then start the next content. The second part of the content is to have a discussion about triangles. Now, what do the interior angles of triangles add up to? You should remember that. Angles add to 180 degrees. You should remember that. And there's a couple of different ways we can classify triangles that we've just got to review quickly here on the board. Now, the first way of classifying them is based on their angles. If all of the angles are acute, we can call the triangle acute. All right? If 
just one of these angles, and it happens to be that one there, are obtuse, which means more than 90 degrees. If merely one of them is more than 90 degrees, we can call it obtuse. So for acute there, they're all under 90 degrees. All angles there were under 90 degrees. They're all acute angles. But if just one angle is obtuse, we can refer to it as obtuse. On the other hand, this one here has got a special symbol in the corner. What does that mean? We can call this one a right angle triangle. It has a 90 degree angle in it. We can call it a right angle triangle. The other way of classifying them is on how many sides are the same. This first triangle here, all three sides are the same, which also means all angles have to be the same. So what do we call it? It's an equilateral triangle. I just was checking the spelling there. Um, so that's an equilateral triangle. You should also be able to tell me what each of those angles are. If those three angles have to be the same, what's each angle? It's just going to be 180 divided by 3. You should recognise that all those angles have to be 60 degrees. There's only one equilateral triangle really possible and in shape and they can just draw it a different size. Here we have a triangle where two of the sides are in common, which also means you get two angles in common. What do we call a triangle with those properties? Isosceles. Then over here, we have a triangle where none of the sides are the same length and none of the angles are the same. What's the label we have for that? Scaling. So from that, you could at times be asked to find out unknown sides. So if I did two examples, I'm going to do, I'll do a scalene triangle. And what's a, what's a nice challenging thing? I'm going to make that there uh, 28 degrees and ask you what X is. And what's another one I could do? Maybe an easier one. If I said that's 95, that's Y, and that's 50 degrees what's why. So I'm going to do those two examples quickly. Here is just a simple case of remembering that the angles of a triangle should add to 180. So 50 plus 95 plus y has to equal 180 degrees. I can combine these. 145 plus y is 180. To get y by itself, I'm going to subtract the 145 from both sides. And you should be able to tell me that y equals 35 degrees. This one here is slightly trickier. It relies on you remembering the principles of um, uh, isosceles triangles because it's got, it will have not only two sides in common, it's got to have two angles in common. That means that this here also has to be x. So if I write an expression for this, 28 plus x plus another x, that plus that plus that, has to equal 180. What's 1x plus 2x? You can combine, the, sorry, x plus x is 2x, right? So you'll get that line there. You've got to solve for x. So first off, we do our addition subtraction. We subtract 28 from both sides to leave us with 2x. So that gives us 2x is equal to 152 degrees. Yep. And now the opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. So if I divide both sides by 2, I'll be left with just x. x is therefore 76 degrees. So if I add 76 twice, 152 plus the 28, I should get my 180 degrees and that definitely works. Okay, so you need to remember those principles about triangles. I'm going to pause for a moment and come back with some more. Okay, the next bit of content requires you to recall different types of quadrilaterals, which are four-sided objects, and their properties. So this is just going to be a quick discussion about, well, the properties of different quadrilaterals. So parallelograms, 
they have two sets of parallel sides, all right? So that, those two are parallel, those two are parallel. A rectangle is very close to a parallelogram in that, yes, the top and bottom are parallel, the left and right are parallel. What's different is that it insists that the angles are 90 degrees. So you can look at a rectangle as a parallelogram where the angles have to be 90 degrees. Squares can be looked at as a special rectangle where all sides are the same length. In a rectangle you have two pairs, in fact in both the parallelogram and the rectangle you have two sides that are the same length. In squares, obviously all sides are the same length. The rhombus, the rhombus you can look like, well we could look at it as a square that doesn't require 90 degrees because all the sides are the same. Another way you can look at the rhombus is it's a parallelogram where all sides are equal length. So it relaxes the 90 degree requirement on the squares, but it requires all sides to be the same length compared to the parallelogram. Kites are simply described as two pairs of equal adjacent sides. So that length is the same as that one, that length is the same as that one, and you pair them up. Trapeziums are regarded as a type of quadrilateral where you've only got one pair of parallel sides. So the, the top and bottom there are parallel. You could write it a number of different ways as long as you've got those parallel lines and there's something connecting the two. Um, so it's enclosed. You end up with a trapezium. So that's the chat about quadrilaterals. I'm going to pause and be back with the next episode. The next bit of our rip through geometry is to look at general polygons. So polygons are enclosed objects and we're going to just have a look at the patterns to do with their um, with the sum of their interior angles. So we've already looked at triangles. The sum of the interior angles on a triangle was what? We just did it. 180 degrees. You should also know that the sum of interior angles on a quadrilateral. You should already know that number as well, but we haven't we haven't talked about it yet. Uh, what was the, the sum of the interior angles on the rectangle? It was four, four lots of 90 degrees. 360, right? All quadrilaterals, the interior angles on them add up to 360. Now we could do a lot of experimentation, but you don't want to see my, my beard any more than necessary. So look, I'll tell you that it essentially goes up by 180 degrees each time. So a five-sided object, a pentagon, you'll find the interior will add up to 540. Six-sided, the hexagon, add 180 again, you'll find the interior angles add to 720. Seven-sided objects, see normally we sit here and we get you all to come out and write them on the board and you'll get stickers, so you're being really deprived of your stickers here. So add another 180, you get 900. Add another 180, you get 1080. And then what, 1260 and 1440? And you could keep going forever. So, what we of course do is we find a general rule for what the angles are going to add to. And the challenge in class, uh, I'd really like to do that, but um, I'd like to challenge you to come up with the rule. But essentially the sum of the interior angles, it's always going to end up being 180 times n take away 2, where n is the number of sides, right? So if I put, for instance, for the 10-sided object there, if I put 10 in this formula, I'd end up with 180 times 8, which is indeed 1,440. So I did put the right number in there, which is good, because uh, you know my 180 times tables aren't as fresh as they probably should be. So an example of actually using that quickly um, you could get a question like this. So a regular, I'm going to draw a regular octagon like a stop sign. And I'm going to go, what's that? Well, firstly, you need to know what the angle sum is. So the Total angles in an octagon, I'll use the rule, 
So it's going to be 180 n take away 2. n is 8 because it's an 8 sided object. So it's going to be 180 times 8 take away 2. So that's 180 times 6. 1080 degrees. And then the value of A, well, there's eight, eight copies of the same angle in there. So it's going to be the total interior angles. The total interior angles is 180, sorry, 1080. So that angle A in there is going to be 1080 divided by 8. It's going to be 135 degrees in there. So each of those angles in the octagon there, each of those would have to be 135 degrees to add up to that total of 1080. We could take the question further. I could have put a line across here extending that out and said, well, what's B? From there, you'd have to remember the principles before. What, do the, what are those two angles? How are they related together? They're supplementary angles. They've got to add to 180. So if those two have to add to be 180, B would have to be 180 take away 135. You could then tell me that B has to be 45 degrees. So you can get all sorts of questions where you have to combine those rules together. So I think I'm down to one more bit of content we have to cover here. I'm just going to pause and get ready for it. The last bit of content for the geometry review works a bit like this. It says that it's called it exterior angle theorem and it's essentially if you've got a triangle, AB here will be the same as the angle C if you extend the line out like that. Uh, I like to try and quickly prove that so because it's more fun and then I'll use it briefly. So if that's angle B and that's angle A, the angles within a triangle have to add to what? They have to add to 180, don't they? So this angle here, I could write as 180 degrees, subtract A, subtract B. Uh, that's, that's the actual angle that it has to be in that corner. Now, if you remember by supplementary angles, remember the rule of supplementary angles at all? all right? That angle there plus that angle there, they have to add to 180. So this angle plus C has to equal 180. If I write that out, I get that sort of rule. Whoa. Uh, sorry. That plus C equals 180. Now, straight away, I can actually subtract 180 from both sides and get rid of the 180s out of that expression. So I'll end up with negative A, take B plus C, remember the negative always belongs to what, what's after it, equals zero. To make that rule now, all I've got to do is add B and C to both sides, because that will leave me at just C over here. So if I add A and add B, I'll end up with just C on this side and A plus B on the other. Thus, I've proven the exterior angle theorem. So it's not too bad to prove. But let's now use it briefly in an example. C, I'm going to call that 58 degrees. I'm going to call that um, 50 degrees. And you could be asked, well, what's C? So you quote the exterior angle theorem. C is A plus B. So that's going to be that angle plus the other one. The angle C there is going to be 108 degrees. All right. There was a lot of content in this unit. There are some interesting, challenging questions. I may actually be back in a sec and do a couple more quick examples of challenging questions before I go. Pausing. Okay, I've decided to do two uh, quick examples of nastier looking questions just to show a couple of techniques and how algebra can get involved in these situations. 
The first here, we need to find the angle X. Now, in some of these questions, see these lines out here are parallel. Sometimes it can be useful to draw a third parallel line just as a technique. So if I drew a third parallel line down here, uh, it can actually become easier to find some of these values. And you may have to go back into your memory of previous years occasionally for some of these rules. All right, now here, if that's 310 degrees, what does the angle in here have to be? Remember, revolutionary angles add to 360. So for them to add to 360, I'd need a 50 degree angle in there. And do you remember, you might, you might know it as a U, the U rule, you may also know it as co-interior angles. What do these two angles have to be? Have to add to be, like this one here plus that one there. They have to add to be 180. So what that means is on this side here, we've got 130 degrees. On this side here, this angle and this angle also have to add together to be 180. So 180 take away this will be 152 degrees. So X is going to be that angle plus that angle. It's going to be 130 plus 152, which will be 282 degrees. You know, if I was formally writing that up, I'd probably give a bit more detail there. I'd explain that, you know, co-interior angles add to 180 and all that sort of stuff to make sure I got that right. Uh, in turn, actually, what would the angle up here be if you were asked for that? You should know that, well, 360 take away that should give you the angle up here as well. Um, so what's that end up being? About 78 degrees. Right, this one down here. You've got to find the value of x. I've made it particularly weird. I hope the numbers add up when we do all this. It, how many sides did it have? One, two, three, four, five. So, you know, the total angle sum. Remember how we did the rule? It was 180 times n subtract 2. In this case, it's a five-sided object. It'll be 180 times 3. So those interior angles need to add to 540. I can now write an expression. So 540 degrees has to equal our 100 plus our 120 plus our 95 plus x plus 2x. I'm going to combine some of that now. So those numbers can all be put together there. 220, 315. And 1x plus 2x is indeed 3x. So to solve for x, we subtract 315 from both sides, do our addition subtraction first. That will leave us with 225 equals 3x. The opposite of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3. So x is divisible by 3. That's, uh, that's good luck. Uh, looks like it's going to be 75 degrees. Now, I'd be tempted to put that in my calculator to check. So if I go 100 plus 120 plus 95 plus 75 plus 2 times 75, I got 540 degrees, which is what I should have. Fantastic. Right, so there's some examples. Go forth and enjoy angles.